If you are a lady and manization is disturbing you, hear the ways of Allah. You see, in Surah Al Mazamil, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave the Prophet some specific hours that he should play, pray. And that it could be half of the night, one third of the night. You know why? Because Allah told him, Inna sanulqi alayka qawlan faqila. Now we're going to give you a heavy burden. So for your burden to be light, then take to tahajjud. That was an instruction to the Prophet of Islam, Muhammad. So the first thing, please, if you want to maintain purity of your spirit, the first thing you have to do is tahajjud. That is number one. Number two is a reading of the Quran. Are you taking the points? Number one is what? If you want purification of your spirit, what do you do? What do you do? Number two is what? Reading of the Quran. Then number three is Adhkar, Bikr. And I'm going to give you the shortest of all of them. The Prophet of Islam, Sallam Hadith from Abu Huraira, he says that anyone who reads this short thicker, Subhanallahi wa bihamdi, glory be to Allah with all of his praises. All of you follow me. Subhanallahi wa bihamdi. Subhanallahi wa bihamdi. Subhanallahi wa bihamdi. The Prophet of Islam وسلم, says that if you read this hundred times, the blessings you get cannot be equaled by anyone except the one who has also read the same. It's huge. It takes me two minutes to read that. Two minutes. So you have your tahajjud, you have your Quran, you have your dhikr. After the five daily prayers on time, that one is a foregone conclusion. I'm giving you voluntary practices that will make you spiritually strong. And you face the world through the power of Allah head on. So that the lippy lippy that the chaka chaka that are disturbing your spirits will cease through the power of Allah. Enough for the spirit. Now the heart. Please, all of you, stand up for 30 seconds. Then we'll continue with the heart. Please sit down. Thank you very much. The human heart is the only organ in the human body that has a material side, the only organ. Material side, spiritual side, and emotional side. That is the only organ. In respect of the material side, all along we thought it was only responsible for the pumping of blood. But it is also responsible for the supply of oxygen. Because it strengthens the lungs for the lungs to be able to help us in the respiratory activity of the body. Not only that, deoxygenated oxygens that have become poisonous in the body. The heart takes the oxygen on board, the dirty oxygen on board, and drop it on the lungs, and the lungs will cleanse the dirty oxygen for it to be recycled in our breathing system. This creature, from the material side that I'm talking, please, there are so many things you have to do to keep your, your heart clean. One of them is good food. From today, if you can, avoid cow meat. 
Hey. You are saying who? Hmm. That that animal meat carries microbes and bacteria. That is the most dangerous meat on the surface of the earth after pork. <laughs> because that is the cheapest meat. People are saying, oh, 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 oh. Number two, too much fats are not good for your heart. Number three, late meals. I went to an office in Accra. There's a gentleman there. One night, he had brought his mattress outside. And then, two balls of bamboo in the bowl. Around eight it. The mattress was down there. And then two balls of thinking by his side. Meaning, he was just going to take the banku and straight to bed. Meanwhile, he had developed protruding stomach. And I was always telling him to exercise. He ate, even if he did not clean up the bowl and slept there. When you do that, number one, you are going to suffer from indigestion. And anything that affects the body affects the heart. Now, young people and young ladies are getting hypertension. The sickness hypertension was over 60 years. Those who were had hit 60 years and above, they were getting hypertension. Now, young people of 25, they are getting hypertension. One of the causes is the food we take in and the kind of thinkings that we do. Somebody is around 25, he wants to build a house. The generation today doesn't have patience to think that Rome was not built in a day. Me, I married my wife, I was 28. I didn't have a room. See, I you. Somebody is asking me why. If you were to know where I came from, huh? Well, now you feel pity for me. Class one and class two, I never wore a school dress. I walked barefooted to school. Class one and class two, I used my mother's clothes to fasten around my neck to attend class one and class two because of the state of poverty in which my parents were. Oh, 30 minutes. That's good time. It means I have to finish at 10 o'clock. I'm going to use 15 minutes for the heart and 15 minutes for the mind. Some of us came from very poor backgrounds. And you see us today, you might think, as for Sheikh Niyama, he woke, he woke up and then it was, it was confirmed. It went to real hell. I got married through a special scholarship from my mother. My first wife. I just me. Between us, we have ten children. So when, when, when I mention 17, who do you think will take the last the large portion of the Yes, I married her. She was 18, I was 28. It was normal at that time. Very, very normal. 18 was good. Me, me, I think I'm very lucky. I've never married any woman beyond 21. My first wife was 18, second one 21, third one 21, fourth one 20. So my mother, he brought me up from age 6. My first wife, the father, Sheikh Adam Abiru, he brought me up and gave me Chiba Hall in his house. 
for me to stay there with my madam. Mm -hmm. My first marriage. Huge support from this wonderful man. He brought me up. I married the daughter. <coughs> In my home, I didn't have furniture. I didn't have television. I didn't have radio. If you entered my house, you only see a bookshelf with books. Also. But this woman was ready. She came from a very rich home. Was ready to stay with me. Pockets were coming running after her. Other islands were coming after her. Rich people were coming after her. But she said, no way. Is this man that I want? And the father has convinced her that his heart will take good care of you. Because I know his heart is heart from his childhood. Yes, he's a top headed person, first class disciplinarian, but he's a loving human being. So, me, when you ask me about my character, when the prophet's character was asked, eh, it was Aisha who answered. So if you, ask, you want to know who I am, go to my wife. Go to my wife and ask her. Yes. I know of one way all of them will describe me with very kind hearted. <laughs> but very tough headed. <laughs> I'm not the type shouts on women. I don't. Because of the way I love my mother, it has affected the relationship between me and my wife. And one of the things I hate in my life is to see a woman cry. I can't control my heart. No, not at all. I feel so much bad. And the woman, they know this weakness. So, but I that is his weakness. But you see, like, she'll be lubricated with a little bit of humor. I'm, I'm a very jovial person. I crack a lot of jokes. But you see, my first wife knows me more than the rest. When I don't have money, that is the time I crack jokes. <laughs> So whenever I enter the house and I start with my jovial self, then Haja Yasu will tell her children, and Namu Papa will miss her. Are you taking notes? Yes. They are learning. You make your wife happy. Why? Women. But lie, it's very easy to control them. We make them complicated. Oh, yeah, that's correct. I'm talking to you from experience. And if you want to be happy in this world, when life give joy to your wife, you'll be the happiest man on earth. They are not wicked by nature, but the wickedness from the wicked hearts of men turn them into Satan. We are dealing with the human heart. Don't give it too much fat. Give it enough rest. That is from the material side. The emotional side, please take note. The emotional side has to do with what I call the person of desire. What you want for yourself and you what you want for others. More often than not, what we want for others is vanity, envy, hatred, selfishness. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala were to send an angel to check all of us, it's only Allah who knows who will pass. Envy, selfishness, greed have eaten the better part of us. And any heart that is envious will never see happiness till it dies. So this heart, from the emotional side, please have love, love, Sitting inside your heart here. Love everybody. Don't talk evil about anybody. Any evil thing that you do affects the
the emotional side of the heart. And you become a disturbed human being on the surface of the earth. So to keep it here, fill it with love for others. Be prepared to support others. The last part of it, which is the spiritual side, is that you have to spend from what you love if you go to the Quran, eh? Allah says, What to Hibun and Mala, Huban, German, and you love well, very strongly. Professor Emeritus Samurai from Syria says that recent research in medicine has established that the human heart has a little, very, very little gold in it. And that is why it loves wealth a lot. <laughs> Just very little is part of the, of the human heart. Otherwise, the love we have for money is too much. Somebody sees fire and he will go for it. So please, do everything to control your heart. Whatever you have, Ibn Tamir says, the happiest person, and when we talk of happiness, it is this heart that is inside here. So the happiest person is the one who is satisfied with what Allah has given him or her. Especially Mata. Well, Tasu the Regan go. Yo, Marika no. Apo, Libinibi. Talking about others, that's the hallmark of women. They talk a lot about others. That's how they do. That is why the Prophet of Allah said that there are going to be many in hell. <laughs> and it is this in trademark that will send some of them there. They talk a lot about people. And they quarrel a lot among themselves. So if you are polygamous like me, it is not everybody who qualifies to be a polygamous person. Mm. Mm. I'm telling you, if I were to sit in court as a judge and give qualification to people to take second, third, fourth wives, a lot of you will not qualify. <laughs> For a simple reason. Even the number one you can't handle. A young man from, a, a man from Tamale. I'm not saying he's a Dagumba man. I am not saying I am not saying he was a Tagumba man. No. Oh, the indirect. Who who son is here? This one. You know. This virus in Tamale with his wife and then six children. It was a brother who was an accountant in Kumasi who was taking care of all of them. Then one morning, around 4 a.m., he came from Tamale. When he arrived, the brother asked, hey, why this all time? So, okay, let us do fajr and then rest. So, after breakfast, we'll talk. After breakfast, this man Open his mouth. In their language, anyway, but let me refer you to Hausa. He said, he mentioned the, name, the brother's name. He was an accountant in one of the schools in Kumasi, SHS. This is a real story. He said, ah, ah, what brought you here? Tabale, Lafia. He said, you see, need the fatty, moon did it. Yeah, Rashida. Now some money will do what they need, but it ain't come back a You, I'm taking care of you, and you are saying children, and out of lust, you want to marry another woman. La ilaha illallah. This can only happen in Africa. <laughs> ah, you even wife number one, the plant is saying children. Somebody is taking care of them. You are still thinking of marry. Some people, I went to Ankafu this morning. 
they will have to be sent to that place for mental cleansing. They are not normal human beings. The final point. So if you want to have purity of heart, train the heart from three angles. The material side, avoid bad meat, bad food, take good rest. Number two, if you want to have purity of the emotional side, have love for everybody. Don't envy anyone. Be content with what Allah has given you. Now, purity of mind. What is the mind? What is the mind? The mind is the gateway to the body. And it has five ambassadors. What are the five ambassadors of the mind? Oh, you people. Aha, mention them for me. Get up, get up, get up and tell me. Give him the mic. He has got it, right? He says the five senses. The five senses. Nurse, 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 nurse. You have the you have the eyes. I'm not talking of the, the physical creatures that represent the senses. Just name the senses for me. Sense of sight, sense of smell, sense of taste, sense of touch, and sense of hearing. That's what I mean. When these senses receive information, the information is digested. Whether it is conviction or ill conviction, it drops into the heart. It stays in there. So the mind is the gateway to the body. When you lose it, you are not counted among the living. You are living but dead. This mind, for it to be pure, as for academic work, is a normal thing. But please, we want purity of mind for Muslims and you in particular for the mind to be pure. Engage the mind in reflection on Allah's power. Constantly read why you can click the topic, the power of Allah. You get different scripts on this subject. And I will leave you with two examples for you to reflect upon. Number one, in December 2004, in Indonesia, the Almighty caused a volcanic action beneath the sea. Prostitutes were having a field day along the coast. And all that they saw was that the sea water had turned black. And then increasing in the movement of the waves, you call it the physics velocity. Huh? Swift movement of the waves. And the seawater have turned black. But they were still enjoying. Imam Shafi says that if people are blind and their hearts are sealed by Allah, their minds are locked up by Allah, when danger is even coming to them, they don't see when they are in the state of ill enjoyment. Yes. They were having open sex. And the sea was were moving. Bro, 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 in a twinkle of an eye. All of them were swept aside. Killed instantly. And the seawater entered the city. Breaking down every single building at the time. Except a mosque and a two-year-old child. Then Hurricane Katrina in August 2005. It started from Cuba, and all these hurricanes, last Tuesday, it had hit Florida, Miami, very strongly, and went to South Carolina, moving on to Arizona and other places in America, breaking down buildings. So when Allah, you are told that Allah destroyed the world with, with water during the time of Noah and your challenge, you are watching, you see, you see the, the, the movement the torrential movement of, of windstorm and rain. 
And they are, they, <laughs> scientists become ball watchers. Nobody can stand in the face of that. Nobody. Hurricane Katrina moved from Cuba. And these creatures or these development disasters are normally controlled by the ambassadors of Allah, the angels. Nobody could stand in the face of this hurricane. That is, it started from Cuba, but Cuba was not a target. So the hurricane left Cuba, and then it left Virginia, all along the East Coast in America. It left Virginia, Washington. When it got to New York, it moved up like an aircraft and flew over America, all the way to the middle of America, New Orleans, killing instantly about 10,000 people in 2005. That was in the first, uh, uh, second part of George Bush rule. I was then in London. I was watching television. And then BBC said, the day the mighty America fell. And George Bush got annoyed and responded he didn't understand why the news network was treating them like that. Then I asked myself, but you claim to be a Christian? Can you face the power of Allah? You people have told us in politics that power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely. I was taught this in secondary school when I read government in 1972. 50 years now. 50 years now, huh? Allah, and you find time to reflect on it after further, after reading the Quran, you can click the net to know the verses that speak about the power of Allah, and constantly your mind is filled with this. The mind becomes pure, and your heart, the spirit, will enjoy all the purity within the self, and they will manifest themselves in good behavior and good character. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. So we are going to acknowledge few dignitaries in our presence. So we have with us our former Vice President for Genesis UCC, Brother Osman with us. We also have our Able Vice President of Span Nation Hall, Madam Andriana with us. We also have our Span Nation Hall, SRC Rep 1, Gashu with us. <laughs>